do not for a moment underestimate the Taliban mentality at work and currently in full flow in India. The Taliban mentality is not necessarily about suicide attacks or stringing helpless citizens to a helicopter, flying them over a city and dropping them. It is something even more sinister. It is the game plan of radicalizing entire communities, creating a false, specious narrative, driving them up a wall, maddening them. Till a point comes when they cannot distinguish between right and wrong, between truth and falsehood, and then these mind arsonists sit back and watch vulnerable communities self-destruct and the electoral and political windfall of the situation as it were falls into their laps. Even as we decode this massive conspiracy, dark powerful forces have pushed the minority Muslim and Sikh communities to the very edge. Frankly, anything can happen now. We are at a very perilous stage in our body politic. Hi and welcome all to the CAA show. My name is Jaggi Basin. CAA is of course conversations and analysis. Ironically, it was actor Nasiruddin Shah who in a short but heartfelt video message picked up all the worrying strains worming their insidious way in the Muslim community. I call it ironic because Nasir has always been a trenchant critic of the Modi government. But even he understood that the present crisis in the Muslim community is not the making of the present government. Rather, after talking to a cross-section of concerned citizenry, it appears to me that all this is the creation of a coalition of forces, a band of vested interests. These forces go by various names and labels such as liberals, seculars, Maoist leftists, religious leaders, mullahs, diobandis, opposition leaders roaming the wilderness and plain troublemakers and entrenched interests like the big landowners and zamindars of Punjab all looking to stage a comeback, profit from human misery and become relevant again. In short, a coalition of troublemakers who are prepared to go to any extent to divide communities and create the mother of all inter-community conflict in India. Very specifically, Nasir and other concerned commentators have understood how these forces are radicalizing Muslim youth by holding up the Taliban as an ideal, symbolic of an idea that nothing is impossible and anything is achievable. In real terms, it means that if a ragtag Taliban army can drive out the world's only superpower, then by that same yardstick, radicalized communities in the country can make India ungovernable for the Modi government. We have already seen glimpses of that perverted ideology at work during the CAA agitation. The agitation died down because of the pandemic and not because of government effort. But now the threat perception is much higher. Young impressionable Muslim youth see daily images of AK-47 holding Taliban, strutting the streets of Kabul, taking part in victory parades, displaying captured arms and ammunition. These images are disturbing but exciting also for the impressionable minds and biased community and religious leaders are going out of their way to eulogize the Taliban and spread the underground message that if the Taliban can throw off the yoke of America, why can't the same be done in India? These are not some voices which are rising in the Kashmir Valley. These voices are surfacing within the minority mainstream across the length and breadth of the country. My sources tell me a lot of this chatter is going on. And the secular liberal community is aware that radicalization is setting in, but they choose not to do anything about it 
or speak about it because they hope to reap gains from the radicalization. Many of the secular commentators, uh, leading lights like Javed Akhtar, have begun to speak in forked tongues. They speak against the Taliban, but end up painting the BJP and the RSS as a real problem. Another so-called liberal voice, Arfa Khanum Sherwani of the Wire, even went to the extent of questioning Nasiruddin Shah's credentials to speak up for the Muslim community. It only makes the argument stronger that leading voices of the community prefer to look the other way as Talibani radicalization takes a hold over the community. If the Muslim community is in a ferment and turmoil thanks to a blighted leadership, then the Sikh community has also been served no better. In their case, the Congress and a very odd combination of rich landed farmers and ultra left farm leaders have cleared the pitch for them. For the benefit of those who need a history lesson, the Congress in the 80s created Bhindranwale to reap electoral benefits. But Bhindranwale had a mind of his own and he radicalized the Sikh peasantry on religious grounds and created perhaps India's greatest insurgency. History repeats itself today, but in a slightly different manner as the rich zamindars and the hardcore left leaders of Punjab have created a non-issue of farm laws into a monstrosity. All this has been done to seek relevance, monetary benefit and electoral advantage. In the process, they are once again radicalizing the Sikh community. The 18th the 80s narrative of the Sikh community being discriminated is back and how? And once again, besides these left farm leaders and rich landlords, the Congress is the big culprit. They are fanning the agitation, which is already showing signs of becoming violent. And eventually the day is not far away when it will become sectarian. The Taliburization of the mind rather than of deed is the real problem. Javed Akhtar glibly equates the BJP with the Taliban. It is this kind of false storytelling, this peddling of equivocation, this plain distortion of truth, which is the real problem. These kind of social and political narrators lay the base for the armies of agitators and terrorists to walk upon and create mayhem in society. But is anyone listening? So on this note, we come to the end of this particular episode and I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, if you like the show, if you like the CES show, please uh, subscribe to us. We would love to have many, many more subscribers for the show. And uh, on this note, uh, it's good night and uh, cheers from my side. And uh, do keep watching the CA show as we bring you more and more episodes in the future.